Good evening, Mystical Misfits. It's uh, Thursday evening, nine p uh, just about 9 p.m. Central. Uh, we'll be starting our meditation in just under six minutes, and I'm just getting my things cranked up here to get the notifications out. And uh, I mentioned this morning I'm, I'm only going to monitor my personal page right now because I've tried monitoring more than one page, and sometimes I think it's uh, jamming the there's just too much uh, internet going up and down, and it jams the pipe. So um, if I don't acknowledge you, if you said something, um, just know that I, it's not for lack of interest. <laughs> so um, I've been going through these top uh, 10 principles that I use for spiritual discernment. And uh, today uh, we are on uh, principle number four. And if you want to get the other ones, just uh, scroll down those videos. Uh, this morning is the same as this evening, which is the next video down on my feed. But um, if you're on Facebook, that is. If you're on YouTube, it's just the last one on YouTube. Uh, but uh, number four uh, of Eric's top ten principles for listening to that still, small voice is this. Uh, God never asks us to do anything that is against our true self-interest. Let me repeat that. God never asks us to do anything that is against our true self-interest. Never asks us to do anything that runs counter to our benefit, even if we are asked to do what the world calls a, quote, selfless act. What do I mean by that? Um, well, um, take Jesus, for instance. He was probably the most uh, selfish person there was, at least in a certain sense. Not self-centered. He was God-centered. Uh, but he knew that where God called, that God had his own best interest in mind, and that and obviously God called him to some very difficult um, pursuits, especially the cross. And, you know, he said, not my will, but thine be done. Um, but he recognized that um, it was in his full, I mean, he, he came to live life most fully and to live out his calling most fully, which was in his best interest because it made him most fully human. And, and so do we. If you look at your Think about your soul in eternity. Like if you could just step outside yourself and see, you know, you in in eternity. If we could speak about time, <laughs> linear time in eternity. Yeah, but just imagine you looking at you and asking, um, how am I going to develop into the most fully um, alive soul? Um, would you want everything to be you know, just kind of neat and orderly and easy and have you know just kind of have success followed by success followed by success? Or would you recognize you'd need to, um, you know, have some experience, some hard knocks to get some learning uh, shaken into you as well? Um, you know, sometimes it's those actually those dark wood um, uh, times where we feel lost or helpless or even fail um, that actually um, proves to be uh, some of the uh, lead to some of the greatest you know um, achievements and moments in our lives. So, um, you know, if you were if you were God, um, you might uh, you know. You, you might see that the same way, that developing you, um, you need to also go through some tough times. Now, that doesn't mean that God sends them. We tend to get it, you know, get ourselves in enough struggle um, on our own. Uh, however, um, I do think there are times when God you know, does lead us to very difficult pursuits and oftentimes gives, gives us a chance to uh, put a stake in the ground and say, this is who I am. And yes, I'm going to suffer uh, for it, but um, this is who I am and this is who I, I was, you meant to be. Um, so uh, that's how I, so a lot of people put up blocks, I think, but we all put up blocks really uh, to God in many ways. But part, one of those blocks is that we think that, you know, if we listen, if we truly surrender, if we truly let down our guard, that God is going to call us to do something that's completely um, off to the side of what, what our soul thinks is important. Um, and it calls us to, you know, go to India and be a Mother Teresa or something like that. Well, um, you know, God does call some people to go to India and be like a Mother Teresa, but not everybody. Uh, for some people, that brings them most fully alive, and, they re and their soul responds with you know, great joy and anticipation. For others, it's you know, nothing, you know, nothing like that at all. Um, and so we're all made differently. We're all, you know, as Paul says, part of one body, but we're very different members. And so... Um, it's, you know, God always calls us to fulfill that place that, uh, uh, that is most fully us. And usually we are holding back from becoming most fully us. We are afraid. We think it's, 
uh, it's too hard or um, maybe that um, moving in a certain direction assumes that we have greater abilities than we actually do, that kind of thing. So it can be feel uncomfortable when we sense the tug of the spirit in a certain direction. But um, you know, the more we trust it, the more we realize that, um, yes, God actually usually calls us to into pursuits that are just a little bigger than we are, but um, God doesn't get stressed out about that. We do, uh, but God expects that you know, God calls us into pursuits that God is going to join us in you know, helping fulfill. Uh, so if we would just kind of have that in mind, uh, we might be a little less stressed about um, following um, our joy, our bliss, and um, that which our soul um, hungers and thirsts for most in this world. So anyway, that's just uh, uh, some thoughts about listening for the Holy Spirit. Hope they were helpful in some way. Uh, hey, uh, Rebecca and Darlene. Hey, good to see you on uh, on uh, Darkwood Brew. I mean, on, on, on Mystical Misfits. Sorry, uh, Darlene. I was just actually I'm cleaning up my office and I'm coming through, going through all kinds of um, finding all kinds of materials from Scottsdale Congregational Church days and just bringing back a flood of of, of very good memories. So um, good to see you online. So uh, we are, we'll take down our timer here. And by the way, I apologize for missing on uh, last Tuesday. I, I, that was completely my fault. I, but I was at a lighting meeting at the church, at the new church facility. We were adjusting lights in the sanctuary and the in chapel and stuff. And it was just like this super intense thing that went on for hours. And by the time I kind of pulled my head up and out of that, it was 9.30 p.m. So anyway, I played hooky. I, I promised not to do that again. Uh, let's... Uh, now uh, begin. Hey Terry, good to see you online too. And uh, I've brought my um, my deep C bell out. Sound like that. And uh, I'm going to pull my Insight Timer. It's a free app. If you uh, would like to continue meditating during the week, uh, the Insight Timer app is fantastic. I think and it's free. So let's um, take a deep breath in. As you do so, let it out slowly. Let your whole day just kind of dissolve with the bell, allowing you to focus greater intention about where we are, what your intention of being here is. You may also remind yourself that there are others who join you tonight. And when we gather as one people, we become entangled with one another in certain ways that are beyond our understanding, but serve to help each other in our meditations. Let's center ourselves and give thanks. And consider the, net, the last 24 hours. Where have you found blessing? Where have you found joy? Where have you found beauty? Most of all, where have you found love? love given to you, or love you've given away.
let the day dissolve once more. We call to our attention someone we care about who's struggling right now. Could also be somebody who we're in conflict with. They're also helpful. Jesus says, pray for your enemies, and there's a reason for that. In fact, well, let's just think about that for a moment. There's somebody who's driving you crazy right now. You may alternately want to pray for this person. The key is to focus on them until you can feel something of where their agitation, their problematic self is coming from. Find that also within you. Find a place where you can relate to that feeling in some way. And bow more deeply to spirit, asking that uh, spirit help you in your own struggle. Bring peace and healing. Bring fullness into your particular struggle. Then as you feel that energy within you, that peace, that calm, maybe a quiet joy, then call to mind that person who's driving you crazy. And join your healing intent with to, and send that towards them. you get the hang of this, you will find you want to pray for everyone who's driving you crazy because it heals you regardless of its effects on them. So pick your person, someone you love and care about or someone who's driving you crazy.
I will just let that person fade. Their concerns are no longer yours this time. Let's focus on ourselves and what we need right now. Maybe strength to deal with this person who's driving us crazy, or perhaps there's a particular challenge you're facing during this coming week or tomorrow. Wherever it may be, just bow a bit more deeply to spirit, open yourself, and let spirit help you kind of consider an array of needs. Where you feel the soul tug, then focus on that need. Try to articulate it as clearly as possible, and then ask for help. Ask sincerely, knowing that if it's important to your soul, it's even more important to spirit. this last stage, we bow, surrender most fully, 
letting go our ego, our desires, our needs, our stresses, our judgment, and our response to feeling judged. Let go of all of it. I'm going to use the bell to kind of help center us in spirit this evening. As you hear it, perhaps just kind of flow with it and let it take you where it will. But keep your focus on surrender to being in presence of the holy. Let the holy take you wherever she will. All this to a close. If you have the luxury of taking more time, then 
simply in gently this evening if you want to just take this this space and dwell in it longer if not I wish you a beautiful evening and uh, we'll see you again soon I hope Monday through Friday 7 a.m. Central and Tuesday Thursday at 9 p.m. Good night and God bless.